What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number three of What's on the Wall. Let's get started right after this. All right, welcome back, everybody, to What's on the Wall, episode number three. My name's Joe. You're watching the Joe Wentz Project TV right here on YouTube. So, the series is doing okay. I like to see a little bit more viewership and uh, more engagement, if possible. That'd be great. But anyway, what is this series all about? It's about my guitars. I swap them out every so often, and I figured I'd do a video about these and kind of make for a cool little segment, I figured. Anyway, let's get started with guitar number one. Here we are. This beautiful EVH Wolfgang Standard, and you're going to see a similar theme with the guitars that come after this. Uh, well, I've called it Black Moon, because to me it, it looks like the surface of the moon. Wolfgang Standard, what is what year is this? Wow, this is a 2019, so yeah, I've had this for quite some time. I've always heard that the trim systems on these things are pretty much like uh, close to the special. I've not had no problems with these things. Now, I will say this, you can see where I upgraded the long screws, those stainless steel. Uh, the saddle inserts are the same, the black saddle inserts, but I did put stainless steel uh, long screws in here, and it's been fine, man. I uh, not had a problem. Also, of course, I upgraded the locking screws as well. The roasted maple neck on these standards is pretty much common practice nowadays, I, I want to say. You know, I didn't get a Wolfgang standard right off the bat when they first came out. I was kind of like, yeah, those are... Nah, I'm not messing with that, man. I always had the Wolfgang specials, and they, they were great. So I kept hearing people uh, talk about these things and how good they were and how good the quality was. So I was like, you know what? I guess I'll try it. Why not? I was very, very happy with it, man. And I was impressed for the most part. Like, wow, this thing is not bad at all for the money. Now, I haven't looked recently on how much the standards go for, but I know, of course, this is a 2019 model. It's, got, it's getting a little age on it. But when I got this, it was around, uh, I want to say, $750, $799, somewhere in that ballpark. You know, I, I, I could be wrong, I'm sure. But that's what I gave for it. Uh, brand new. Uh, it's got these awesome MXR knobs on here. Uh, like Eddie has on the specials. There's a lot of things that are reminiscent of the special. Usually you have a, a what do you call it, a high friction knob, whatever, right here on the tone where it doesn't move as easily. I could be wrong on that, but it's just normal. Uh, also, there's no detuna on the trim systems on these, um, on these particular models, I should say, which is fine with me because I don't ever use the detuna anyway. Three-way switch, uh, the Wolfgang uh humbuckers um of course the open cavity in the back because I, I don't like having the covers on it's always fun to do that little trick when you got a lot of delay and reverb on and just scrape the strings you know like eddie did you know and it really makes a cool effect it sounds weird right there but it's a cool effect evh strap of course come on man you got to have the evh strap and the uh dog clasp um and the eye hooks you know it just makes it Makes it fun. It's you know when you geek out on this stuff, you like to add a little, a little bit of coolness to it if you can. It doesn't help me look cool, but the guitar. Okay, boy, you can tell a difference right away with the weight of this guitar. This is a PV Wolfgang Special. All right, so it's very similar to the standard, but then again, it's its own kind of thing. This is of course when Eddie went to PV right after he left uh, Ernie Ball Music Man. He went to PV for a while. Awesome. Home run all the way. These are my favorite out of the whole series of the Eddie Van Halen models. If I if I had to, you know, somebody said, which one would you take? It would be these. This one here is completely stock. The only thing that I did was I upgraded the locking screws to these titanium red ones here to try to match the body that was the only thing i did i didn't uh i didn't do anything else i didn't change it still has the plastic look at that on the back it still has the plastic on the on those covers of course i took that cover off but i have it over there in the in the drawer uh stock pv trim system with the detuna just the one knob 
Of course, it's not the MXR knob, as you see. It's just a regular volume knob, um, like from a Strat. This guitar is great. It's, I can already tell right when I picked it up off the hanger, it's, it's heavier. It's quite a bit heavier than the standard. Wow, this is a, uh, if I'm reading this right, this is a 2008 model. I played this guitar a lot. I haven't played it recently, but uh, I found it on uh, Reverb. Yes, found this on Reverb. And I didn't tell you where I got the standard either. I need to tell you that. But I uh, found this on Reverb for a great deal uh, right before Eddie passed. And the uh, thing was, what did he pass? October of 2020. So if you back up a few months, just went on this surge of buying these things. Now, I didn't get a whole lot. I think I got all together. I got maybe six. Those guitars play great, man. They're fantastic. I love the Wolfgang Special by PV. Like I said, Reverb is where I got that one from. We didn't go back and forth too much on it. I guess he was ready to unload it. Of course, like I said, it was before Eddie passed. But this one here... The standard, I ordered that brand new from AMS, American Musical Supply. That's where I got the standard from. So let's go to the third one right here. Okay, all right. Now, another EVH Wolfgang standard. I played this on the uh, show last Saturday. This one, I have the upgraded stainless locking screws, of course. Everything else is stock except for the springs. I did put the new springs on. Was, uh, I just thought it looked cool. And... Um, I think the springs that came on here were a little bit more high friction or high tension, whatever you call it. Again, the EVH branded Floyd. I want to say this color is called like Desert Sunset or something, I want to say. Um, you can still find these. I actually saw this not long ago online. This is a 2020 model. That's when I got this. So it's, uh, you know, just four years old. Not too bad. Uh, I Like I said, I played this... Uh, not long ago, and it's great. Uh, this one, maybe it's just me, I don't know, but it seems like it has the, the higher, it doesn't move as easily as the other one. So, could be just me. It, has, it seems like it has the, the uh, pots aren't as uh, loose or move as freely. Again, Wolfgang pickups, you know, great, man, great guitar, man. Golly, this is amazing guitar. Not really too bad on the weight. It's not bad at all. Um, it's very comfortable to play. Stock EVH tuners here. Again, with the roasted maple neck. It just To me, it just looks badass. These necks on these standards are amazing. And it just goes really well with the, with the color. I like it very much. It's very nice. Awesome guitar. And uh, yeah, another... Wolfgang Standard, another great mark and quality over there at EVH. They're uh, knocking it out of the park, man. I'll tell you, a PV Wolfgang Special once again. Now, let me explain something about this guitar before you start flipping out and going crazy. Now, when I bought this off of Reverb, the main thing that really attracted me was the top. It's got that tobacco sunburst top. I've always thought that looked really, really cool. And it had a gold no name Floyd on it okay and they had the golden volume knob on it had this uh, gold locking nut up there okay and the, uh, the tuners so whoever had this took the original pickups out of it and put these in I don't even know what these are I couldn't tell you uh, they don't sound bad I took the original no name Floyd off I say Floyd, it wasn't even a Floyd branded unit. It was just nothing, just a generic unit. And it was horrible, man. It wouldn't hold its tuning, so I chunked it. Got a Goto 1996, Japanese branded. Um, it's got the nice block in the back. You can tell they got this one, so it doesn't, it's not floating. Now they got the, and it's uh, topped off there, which is fine with me. This plays really, really good. I had a time with it at first because I had to put some stainless steel uh, screws up here and the, the Floyd that was on there or that unit that was on there, man, it was you would play it and it would not hold its tuning and strings were breaking and all this. So when I swapped all that stuff out, it's fine now. It's been, been perfect ever since. Uh, sometimes some of these things will take three springs and sometimes uh, two. It depends on how stiff the bar is this is 
really pretty easy right there. But if you had three on here, it would be like, Ugh, you know, I can't stand that. So two was fine. And once you get it set up, it's perfect. So that's what's on the wall here. Nothing but <laughs> Wolfgang specials and Wolfgang standards. It's, uh, they're just such amazing guitars, man. I can't harp on it enough how wonderful these guitars are. Uh, actually, these are the guitars that were in these four cases right here. That's what that's what these are. Plus, it was it was easy to get to them. <laughs> I could just put the other ones back in the warehouse and pop these right out. So this one uh, is called Black Moon. All right. This one, because some people name their guitar, some people don't, and uh, I do from time to time. But I did name these. This one, the Red PV Wolfgang Special. I named it Red Fox because I've always been a huge fan of Zephyr and Son and Red Fox, his comedy and everything. So named it Red Fox. And of course, the uh, Desert Sunset, I just named it Desert EVH. I sometimes put these uh, labels on my cases with this green painter's tape. Uh, it just makes it easier to read what's in the case. You know, you, you don't have to name them. You can put whatever. <laughs> That's just what I do, so I know what it is. And of course, the very last one, since it's the Tobacco Sunburst here, I named it Lucky Strike after the cigarettes from back in the day. And my dad used to smoke those when I was a kid. There you go. There's that. <laughs> so, but, all right, there's a couple other things I want to talk about as well, because I knew these wouldn't take long, because they're all pretty much basically the same guitar. There is another edition that, actually two new editions that came in the mail uh, today and yesterday. All right, so first, let me show you this. Now, I'm sure people have seen this before. It's been out for a little bit. I just happened to come across it recently. And, you know, I was laying in the bed one night, had my AirPods on, and boy, what a difference things are now that I got an iPhone. It's so, the quality, quality on everything is so much better. You couldn't have told me that before because I was strictly just Android. I'm not saying nothing bad against, if you have an Android phone, I'm not knocking it. I had one for years and years and years, and it took that long for my family to convince me you do videos all the time you need an iphone it's going to be better so i did thank you to my family for that so i'm laying there with my airpods on one night watching a video getting ready to go to sleep this was actually last weekend last saturday night and i seen a guy do a video with this called the pod express by line six all right so i'm sitting there and i'm like what the heck is that? Now, the only Line 6 product I have, you probably can't see it in the frame, is this Line 6 Spider 4 amp sitting right over here uh, where the net graveyard is, as I call it. I, you know, I always thought it was a great little amp. It's a little combo amp, two 10-inch speakers. It's just, it's just a solid-state amp, but I think it sounds great, man. My son had one first, and I was like, dude, what, let me, what are you doing? Uh, he's jamming on it, so I went and ordered one right away. This was years ago. But anyway, the Pod Express by Line 6. I've heard good things about it. I've heard kind of okay things about it. But it all comes down to what you think as a player. Every, everybody's different. I'll be honest with you. When I got this unit, I was totally blown away. I really was. Now, you can see the reason I'm not picking up the actual unit is because it's on my board. I'll show a picture of that, uh, what it looks like. But you have uh, you have uh, left and right outs. You can see right there, and you got your guitar input, your left and right out, and you have a place for a foot switch. So if you want to designate uh, these effects to a optional foot switch to turn them off and on, you can. I haven't done that yet. They say you got to get on the online and look at the online manual to to do that. But I did order an, option, uh, an extra foot switch, rather, from Amazon. But this little thing here is great. Now, um, basically, I'm just going through the presets. Uh, I'm still learning this unit, so I can't speak a whole lot on it. Uh, but I did go ahead and put it on my board because you can, you know, if you have a power supply uh, on your board, you can power this unit. It does, you can run this off of three AAA batteries. And I, I was trying to power this off my board, but it was a lot of interference. And so I had to just get a single nine volt power adapter and plug it in over here. Uh, so it just had its own power supply, you know, 
and it took away all that noise. So that's good because I didn't want to keep burning batteries up. But this thing is great. I'll let you hear a sample uh, here in a minute of what I, I have it on a lead tone. There's different, you got, like I said, I haven't really dove into it too much. You got a clean, you got clean, uh, you got special, you got chime, you got dynamic, crunch, heavy, and then my favorite, lead. You got that. It sounds great. It sounds just like uh, I watched a, a stream the other night where, uh, from Line 6 where they uh, were talking about this unit and people were asking questions. And that lead channel is based after the, uh, uh, I guess, the EVH 5150 or the, the PV, I'm sorry, the PV 5150, which I do have. Uh, I'm assuming it's based off that from what they were saying. But so you got this right here is your uh, delay, your delay knob right there. And up here you have your different distortions. Um, and down here is your reverb. And up here is your modulation. So if you want, you know, chorus, flanger, phaser, or tremolo, you know, you can do that. So as of right now, I'm just using the lead channel, um, using just barely some effects on that. Uh, cause I, I got a whole nother board with, uh, reverbs and delays over there, stereo. So I'm coming out stereo and going into that board over there. I'm bypassing the head rush altogether right now. And again, I'll show pictures of this or video rather to kind of show you my setup and we'll give you a, a quick demo of what it sounds like. But this little thing here, I love it cause you could, you could take this along with if you want some more pedal whatever or just that unit by itself hook it up to a, a pa or whatever if you're doing a little gig somewhere and that's it and your guitar and you're good to go man you don't have to you know you don't have to take a lot of stuff it's very convenient and man that's what sold me on it is convenience plus it sounds really good you know there it's like they they say it's kind of like a little mini helix in a box now is that spot on like a helix of course not but it does have some similar features and it's really really close on some of those effects my son has a helix so uh i, I could tell right away on uh, some of these oops, how similar it was uh anyway so that's really cool really nice now the other addition that actually came today let's talk about that right now all right here we go let me introduce you to this sbs super strat now you might be thinking sbs what is that SBS stands for Steve Brown Sound. If you're not familiar with Steve Brown, he's the guitarist of Trickster, incredible guitar player. And I got the Relict version. Uh, I just thought it was cool. Again, I took the back plate off. Got the SBS neck plate on there, really cool. Baked maple neck again. Now look at the flame on that thing, man. God, dog. Just regular tuners are not locking. Reverse headstock, it's just, it's great. Now, I will say this Floyd Rose is of the lower tier. So far, it's hanging in there, but I'll show you what I did. I actually upgraded. I took the old screws, that long screws out. These are stainless steel, and I replaced the saddle inserts for stainless steel as well. Whoops, back here. <laughs> right there, all right? And the little screws that go down in there, I've replaced those. So everything that's silver is stainless steel, and I replaced on the trim system upgraded all that because it wasn't packaged very well that's one thing i have to say about guitar fetish i've never ordered a guitar from guitar fetish once i got this set up um and upgraded this right here it does great it plays fine it plays incredibly well but man they had me nervous the way it was shipped it was shipped in this real flimsy box and then inside of that was another you know have that uh, the long slim guitar box that it looks like a coffin and it fits in and, and you know, it, you could see where it was taped shut, but all the tape had been cut. Like, I don't know if they were checking to make sure it was what it was supposed to be when they shipped it, but they had just a little bit of bubble wrap on the side. And man, that box was, I can't believe it didn't. It was barely holding on by a couple pieces of tape, packaging tape on the top. I mean, all I did was go and it opened right up pretty much. I mean, I was just like, wow, that's guitar fetish. Y'all need to step that up, man. Y'all shipping. Whoever's over that <laughs> needs to be reprimanded or something, man. Because I was like, if this guitar is messed up, I'm sending it back. But luckily, it was fine. 
it was fine. So it does have, now like I said, I've ordered from Guitar Fetish before. These are the SBS humbuckers as well, Steve Brown Sound. And these are hooked up with the Quick Connect system. So if you're not familiar with that, that means I could take these pickups out and just unplug it and plug another Quick Connect design pickup right back in there if I wanted. I don't need that on this guitar since Steve Brown is a huge EVH fan. He knew what he was doing by putting some great pickups in here to start with. So I don't need to worry about that. But that option is available if you want to do that. Now, that does have coil split right here on the tone. I don't really, never, I've never really cared about that. Never was a, I just don't care about that. You know, if it's got humbuckers, I want to hear the humbucker. But it's there if you want it. It is a, a Floyd Rose branded unit. You know, you can see it right there. It's there. But it just, it does fine, man. But you can see the block in the back is really small. It's really shiny. It's that, looks like that Chinese pot metal. See how shiny that is right there. You know, so I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to get a Goto 1996 uh, Black Floyd and swap this out. This one's okay. It's holding up fine, but it's just, you can just feel the low quality in the tuners and, you know, I mean, once I got it set up, it's so far it's doing fine. And like I said, I replaced the stainless steel stuff. It's okay. It's fine. But, but I do want to upgrade the Floyd and put a 1996 Goto on here. And, uh, so this, this guitar is great. Uh, it feels wonderful. Uh, the neck is nice and slim. It's almost kind of like, uh, really similar to the EVH Stripe series. It's really similar to that, how it feels. It's just maybe a little, just a tad smaller as far as the radius here, and, and uh, but it's very comfortable to play. And um, I've been playing it for probably over an hour after I got it set up, and uh, totally happy with it. So I will, uh, we'll go ahead and give this a play and let you hear it. We'll go ahead and play through this Pod Express by Line 6 as well and we'll cut some effects on on the board over there and, and let you hear how everything is enhanced with uh, these stereo effects. This wow, man, it's great, really fun. So, all right, stick around, don't go anywhere. Let's do a little jamming real quick and we'll top this thing off just right. All right, here we go with this awesome SBS Super Strat. So right now we have it in clean mode. I'll let you hear, uh, we'll go through the pickups here. That's the uh, bridge position, and it's just a three-way switch. So we'll go up one position, and should be one of each. And now we'll go to the neck. Did you hear that? Okay, now, so now I'm going to let you hear the coil split on the tone knob here. So you just pop that right up and we'll go through the pickups one more time. Once again, the bridge. there we go with that right there and now that we're bypassing the uh the uh, pot express so i'm going to click it on all right now we're on the lead channel right now That's just 
that's the lead channel I have just a little bit of uh, plate reverb dialed in and just a uh, slight ping pong delay I mean it's so slight it's very very slight because I have other delay units over here that we're going to incorporate with that uh, just to enhance everything um, I love going after cool sounds with delays and all so all right that's now I'm going to add a couple more delays. Let's go ahead and add the uh, Boss SDE 3000 dual delay. We'll uh, do one channel at a time. So you can hear that really enhances things a lot. It really sounds really, really full and wide. And we're going to add another delay. This time it's going to be the Boss DD5 on top of it. So now I have uh, technically three, actually four delays going right here. The one on the Pot Express is very, very, very subtle. And then we have these over here on the uh, board. <laughs> to me, that sounds amazing. And there's another delay if I want to add it uh, where it's more, you know, the timing is a little different. It's great for doing ballads and stuff like that. Anyway, and I'm going to add in this Cathedral studio, uh, Stereo Reverb as well. I got it uh, last weekend. Before and after. So you can really hear that, that reverb kick in. Sounds awesome. All right, so... Let's jam out a little bit and let you hear this puppy in action. It's a great guitar. I really, I really enjoy it. Oh, what was the price? You may add. You may. What was the price? You may ask. The price was three seventy nine. Like I said, the shipping scared me because they kind of half-assed that. But the guitar is fine. Uh, three seventy nine, and you know I'm getting ready to upgrade the, like I said, the Floyd on it. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs>
So there you go, the Steve Brown sound super strat from Guitar Fetish, man. Check it out if you get a chance. Uh, it's a great guitar. It's a lot of fun to play, uh, and it's just fine. If you like that kind of price range on a guitar, I love it myself. Hey, you've been watching What's on the Wall. My name's Joe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, do me a favor, man. If you don't mind, give us a thumbs up at the end of this video and leave a comment if you can. Uh, more engagement means better interaction for this channel and it's going to put it up there with the recommended stuff on YouTube. Uh, I would really appreciate that very much if you could just take a second and do those couple of things. Really, I really would appreciate it. The people that do comment and give a thumbs up, thank you so much for doing that. I really do appreciate that a whole lot. Until next time, this is Joe for the Joe's Project TV. Stay cool on your stool. Keep rocking. Stay safe. Bye-bye.